Ordo Matris Dei, Mary's New Order. Behold your mother, John chapter 19, verse 5. During the apparition at La Salette, the Blessed Virgin dictated a new religious rule to be the basis of many congregations in the order of the Mother of God. The rule of the Mother of God consists of 33 short paragraphs. The text is available at the Marian News website. Mary's new order is a reflection of Sister Anne of Yahweh on the place of the seven major rules and religious orders in the life of the Church. Two other Marian News presentations explain how Mary is calling everyone to help her. La Salette for Our Times and Working with Mary. Yahweh showed Moses the pattern of how he desired to be worshipped. The outer courtyard which surrounded the temple was the place where the priests, the Levites, and the lay tribes offered exterior worship of psalms and sacrifices. The interior of the meeting tent or temple represented interior worship. Yahweh prescribed that images of angels be embroidered on the curtain. In this heavenly space, angels joined Israel to celebrate the love of God. Also in this interior room is the altar of incense, the table of showbread, and the menorah or lampstand. The priests took turns offering incense on an altar morning and evening. The lay tribes offered twelve loaves from their labor every Sabbath. The Levites kept the seven lamps on the lampstand continually burning with oil from the tithes and labor of the lay tribes. In the old Israel, Levites sang psalms in the temple, assisted the priests, and instructed the people. In the new Israel, consecrated religious fulfill the role of the Levites. The Levites kept the seven flames lit on the lampstand. This provided light for the priests and served as a symbol of Israel's unceasing devotion. The Holy Spirit illuminates the living temple with seven charisms of consecrated life. Religious consume themselves in unceasing service and devotion. The first flame on the lampstand represents the rule of St. Albert. From the days of Elijah, men felt called to consecrate themselves to chastity. Freed from personal family obligations, they lived in solitary caves to contemplate God and to beseech His mercy upon the family of the world. The early Christian monks were known as the Desert Fathers. During the Crusades, St. Albert, the Patriarch of Jerusalem, was asked to codify a rule for the monks living on Mount Carmel. Today, there are active and contemplative congregations attached to this rule. The second flame on the lampstand represents the rule of St. Basil. In the 3rd and 4th centuries, some Christians began to hesitate about the divinity of Jesus because of the confusion raised by the heretic priest, Father Arius. God raised up the priest monk Basil to clearly proclaim that Jesus Christ is fully divine and fully human. The Basilians have always been in the vanguard defending the importance of the Holy Trinity the Holy Spirit, and the importance of sacred art. 
Most of the congregations in the Eastern Catholic Rites are based on the long and short rules of St. Basil. The third flame on the lampstand represents the rule of St. Augustine. Bishop Augustine was a prolific writer and teacher, constantly engaged in the religious questions of his day. He found it stimulating to his mind and heart to live in the company of other priests. They exchanged ideas and worshipped together. Countless congregations take their inspiration from St. Augustine. St. Dominic began religious life as an Augustinian. The family tree of Augustine is vast and ever-flourishing. The Heronomites, Mercedarians, Visitandines, Brigitines, Norbertines, and many modern teaching congregations. The fourth flame on the lampstand represents the rule of St. Benedict. When the Roman Empire was disintegrating in the 5th century, God raised up the monks of St. Benedict to be the messengers of peace, the masters of civilization, and the great heralds of Christianity in Western Europe. Their libraries became the world's repositories of learning and culture. In the 8th century, bishops met in Rome and decided that unaffiliated diocesan religious communities would benefit by taking their inspiration from the rule of St. Benedict. Great Benedictine reform movements have given rise to new branches, such as Carthusians and Trappists. The fifth flame on the lampstand represents the rule of St. Francis. The Church of the Middle Ages has grown complacent. Feudal wars sadly testified to the absorption of Christians in the pursuit of worldly wealth and property. The Lord spoke to a young Italian named Frenchy and asked him to rebuild the church. St. Francis's radical detachment from earthly goods and his equally radical imitation of Jesus, even to bearing his wounds, inspired thousands in his own day and ever since to embrace once again the values of the gospel. Besides the laity in his third order, there are poor clares, Capuchins, Calatines, and innumerable congregations. The sixth flame on the lampstand represents the rule of St. Ignatius. The 16th century was a time of exploration and conflict. New continents were being discovered where millions waited to hear the gospel and to receive the sacraments. But in Europe, Catholics were falling into moral corruption, wars, and heresies. St. Ignatius and his company boldly engaged the New World and the Old World at every front. Jesuits, as spiritual directors, assisted a great number of future founders and foundresses of active missionary communities to respond to the fresh calls of the Holy Spirit. The seventh flame on the lampstand represents the rule of the Mother of God. La Salette was the very first public apparition where Mary delivered prophetic messages for the world. On a high plateau between France and Italy, a new Marian era began in the church. The Mother of God gave a new rule and called for a new order. This rule would be for a latter time when the Bride of Christ has reached maturity an educated laity, and is ready for spiritual nuptials. This order will help the church strive for holiness and reject the temptations that come with the knowledge of good and evil. Melanie foresaw that many congregations would be attached to this rule. The Apostolic Charisms of the Seven Rules The Apostolic Charism of St. Albert 
the offering of their lives as a fragrant holocaust to God for his honor and glory, and to implore every grace for mankind. The Apostolic Charism of St. Basil Veneration of Holy Images to Praise God for Having Revealed Himself to Man The Apostolic Charism of St. Augustine To destroy all heresies through study, preaching, and the recitation of the Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Apostolic Charism of St. Benedict The Celebration of the Divine Liturgy to Offer Daily Praise and hospitality as a service to those in search of God. The Apostolic Charism of St. Francis An effective devotion to the suffering and poverty of Jesus Christ, who calls us to take up our cross and follow him in penance and reparation. The Apostolic Charism of St. Ignatius Spiritual Direction and devotion to the Sacred Heart and the Divine Mercy as means of purifying hearts for union with God. The Apostolic Charism of the Mother of God Encouraging first of all those in the household of God to aspire to the life of perfection. The Models of Holiness of the Seven Rules the Model of Holiness of St. Albert, Mary at Nazareth, St. Elijah, and St. John the Baptist. The Model of Holiness of St. Basil, Christ Transfigured. The Model of Holiness of St. Augustine, Christ the Teacher. The Model of Holiness of St. Benedict. God the Father, and the Abbot as Spiritual Father. The Model of Holiness of St. Francis, Christ Crucified, Meek, and Poor. The Model of Holiness of St. Ignatius, Christ the Merciful Pilgrim. The Models of Holiness of the Mother of God, Mary, Queen of Apostles and Spouse of the Holy Spirit, and St. Joseph, King of the Holy Family and Spouse of the Gebirah. The Beatitude Emphasis of the Seven Rules The Beatitude Emphasis of St. Albert is Purity of Heart. The Beatitude Emphasis of St. Basil is Meekness. The Beatitude Emphasis of St. Augustine is Hunger. The Beatitude Emphasis of St. Benedict is Peacefulness. The Beatitude Emphasis of St. Francis is Poverty. The Beatitude Emphasis of St. Ignatius is Mercy. And the Beatitude Emphasis of the Mother of God is Mourning. Prayer Emphasis of the Seven Rules The Prayer Emphasis of St. Albert is Spiritual Repose in the Transcendent God. Prayer Emphasis of St. Basil is Spiritual Illumination in the Contemplation of the Ineffable Face of God. The Prayer Emphasis of St. Augustine is spiritual warfare against erroneous concepts of God. The prayer emphasis of St. Benedict is joyful exultation in the goodness of God and his creation. The prayer emphasis of St. Francis is abasement before God and repentance on behalf of sinners. The prayer emphasis of St. Ignatius Spiritual union with God's vehement love for all men, be they worthy or unworthy. The prayer emphasis of the Mother of God is compassionate union with the desire of the Holy Trinity to draw every person into their relationship. 
the seven lawgivers of the seven rules. First rule. St. Albert, a Norbertine friar, officially ratified a text as Patriarch of Jerusalem, which the hermits of Mount Carmel presented to him for approval. Second rule. The followers of the monk Basil received texts given by St. Basil. Third rule. The companions of St. Augustine received texts given by St. Augustine. Fourth rule. Followers of the Abbot Benedict received texts given by St. Benedict. Fifth rule. The quote, little brothers, end quote, of Friar Francis received texts that were given by St. Francis. Sixth rule. The Compania de Jesus received the texts given by St. Ignatius. The seventh rule. Melanie received messages given by Mary, the mother of God, in an apparition in La Salette, France. The members of St. Albert are popularly named Carmelites. The members of St. Basil are popularly named Basilians. The members of St. Augustine's rule are popularly named Augustinians. The members of the fourth rule, St. Benedict, are popularly named Benedictines. The members of the fifth rule, St. Francis, are popularly named Franciscans. The members of the sixth rule, St. Ignatius, are popularly named Jesuits. And the members of the seventh rule, the Mother of God, are popularly named Theotokens or God Bearers, the proper Greek term for the Mother of God. We can present the first and seventh rules as bookends, which enclose all religious orders of all times. The early monks who withdrew into solitude took Mother Mary as their model of prayer because she pondered the word of God in her heart and in her womb. Communities with active apostolates look to Mary, the Queen Mother at Pentecost, always encouraging those who stand ready to spread the gospel. The rule of St. Albert ponders Mary as at Nazareth. The rule of the Mother of God ponders Mary as at Jerusalem and as Queen of the Apostles. The rule of St. Albert signifies the interior union with Mary by the exterior sign of the brown scapular. The rule of the Mother of God signifies the interior union with Mary by the exterior sign of a formula of consecration to her. The rule of St. Albert emulates St. Joseph's humility and hiddenness, while the rule of the Mother of God emulates St. Joseph as protector and model of holiness and fatherhood. Universal membership in the Order of Our Lady of Mount Carmel is attained by wearing the habit of the order in the form of a small brown scapular. Universal membership in the order of the Mother of God is attained by personal consecration to Jesus through the Immaculate Heart of Mary. The Blessed Virgin Mary embraces the members of all the orders with the two, quote, hands, end quote of the first and seventh major rules. The visual image of seven flames was only employed here on the menorah to illustrate the historical sequence of the lighting of the one lampstand of God's temple. 
Yahweh instructed Moses to make a golden lampstand in the form of a blossoming almond tree. The Hebrews called the almond tree the watcher. The almond was the first to bloom, so it seemed to be on the lookout to announce the new time with its bright buds. Prophets and religious are watchers because they stand apart from society to climb in spirit to see what enemies or temptations are on the horizon so as to warn the people to repent. Angels and religious are watchers because they live in chastity to be fully available in God's service and in battle with spirits of evil. It's a challenging task for laypersons to trace their lineage, generation by generation, back to their original parents to show the branches of their family tree. Likewise, it's a challenging task for religious to trace their lineage, congregation by congregation, to their original rule to show the branches of their family tree. Names of congregations can be modified as they move from diocesan to papal status. Congregations branch off to attend to special apostolates and some disappear into history. Some congregations remain independent. Others organize into orders. Canonical categories are not always consistent from century to century or diocese to diocese, and fires and wars destroy written records. Elder children blaze the trail, so to speak. The youngest child is naturally precocious, having the advantage of experience gained by the elder siblings. Therefore, it's only to be expected that the seventh rule demonstrates a certain maturity. The seventh rule is the first rule to identify its spirit with the Holy Spirit, to refer to an order and give it a name, to be dictated from heaven, to be shown in vision, members engaged in apostolates, to gain papal approbation before it had members, to be addressed to female religious, to specifically designate the laity in the document, to legislate exposition of the Blessed Sacrament, to withhold Holy Communion from unworthy religious, to mandate humility and sweetness in relations among religious and in their relations with the laity. To prescribe that members wear a special crucifix which features a hammer and pincers. The symbol suggests that the risen Christ is pained by our sins or relieved by our virtues. The seventh rule holds laity in unique esteem. The first six rules mention neither nuns nor lay members. These categories evolved into second orders, third orders, oblates, etc. But in the order of the Mother of God, the lay members are regarded as intrinsically essential to the fulfillment of the charism and apostolate. Nevertheless, lay affiliation emphasizes the baptismal vocation. Lathia tokens do not make vows or promises, and membership is open to those who formally belong to other third orders. Marian orders are universal orders because Mary is the mother of the church and the lady of all nations. The last shall be first. The laity have previously been the last to be appended to the older rules. 
In the seventh rule, the laity are the first to initiate the order of the Mother of God, at least at a grassroots level. Perhaps there is an analogy in the flowery paradise built by the children on the common pasture land at La Salette. It was on this spot that Mary seated herself as queen. Lay enthusiasm is not surprising because Mary has been appearing all over the earth and millions of Catholics have responded to her calls for consecration. They will welcome and support OMD religious priests, brothers, and sisters. The Four Apostolates of Theotokens To Evangelize To Transfigure To Encourage And To Restore These are developed in a separate presentation called Working with Mary. The Thea Token Mission Statement A Thea Token is a God-bearer who strives to participate in Mary's interior life as one attentive to the Spirit of God, and in Mary's apostolic life as one who carries the Word of God into the world, and in Mary's family life as one who lives overshadowed by the Father. Theotokens are attentive to Mary. Mary has been announcing through her approved apparitions that these are her times. From La Salette, on September 19, 1864, Mary proclaims, Behold the time of times, it is time, I am with you and in you. And from Amsterdam, on July 2, 1951, Mary proclaims, I have told you, this time is our time. And from the Marian Movement of Priests book, A Message to Father Gobi, she says, The decisive times have come. And this next passage is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 12, verses 13 through 16. The dragon pursued the woman for a time, and times, and half a time. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Lathia tokens strive daily to recite one of the prayers given by Mary during her apparitions, for example, Amsterdam, Akita, and Marienfried to meditate on the gospel mysteries by praying five decades, or at least one decade, of the Holy Rosary, to wear a visible religious symbol to stimulate curiosity and invite discussion, to wear the brown scapular as a personal reminder of one's Marian consecration, to read a passage from Mary's messages from approved apparitions, Lay Thea tokens strive weekly to devote some time to an apostolic work in the spirit of Mary. To meditate for at least a quarter hour on sacred scripture, giving priority to the readings of Sunday Mass. To offer Holy Communion, indulgence prayers, or personal sacrifices for the holy souls in purgatory. To meet with other Theotokens in person or virtually for fraternity and inspiration. To attend at least one extra Mass. To make a personal holy hour before the Blessed Sacrament. And to pray the Office of Lauds or Vespers. Lay Theotokens strive monthly to confess their sins and receive the sacrament of forgiveness, to join other Theotokens in a communal holy hour. Lay Theotokens strive annually to renew their consecration to the hearts of Jesus and Mary. And this next passage is taken from the Marian Movement of Priests book, from messages given by Mary to Father Gobi. She says, 
There is no need of organization. Everything should be simple, spontaneous, quiet, and fraternal. Theotokens who are consecrated religious must live in community. Priests and brothers will have their own constitutions. Sisters will have their own constitutions. In generations to come, there will be many congregations. Each community will begin, according to canon law, as a private association under the supervision of a diocesan bishop. Theotokens are the heirs of the Marian movement of priests. The initial task entrusted to the Marian movement of priests was to bring souls to the consecration to my Immaculate Heart. Taken from Marian movement of priest, message number 487. The subsequent task was to show yourselves to all as my consecrated ones, as the apostles of the last times. As apostles of the last times, you must announce with courage all the truths of the Catholic faith, proclaim the gospel with force, and resolutely unmask the dangerous heresies which disguise themselves with truth. And that message was taken from Marian Movement of Priests book message number 451. The locutions of Father Stefano Gobi 1973 through 1997 have received a papal blessing, the imprimatur, and have been acclaimed by thousands of clergy of all ranks. There are lay cynicals in nearly every country of the world. See www.mmp-usa.net for info and book and Marian News website for a free PDF. Theotokens are the heirs of the Marian movement of priests. The Rule of the Mother of God Number 22 My missionaries will be the apostles of the last times. They will preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in all its purity all over the world. Page number 23, they will have an untiring zeal. They will preach the reformation of hearts, penance, and the observance of the laws of God. They will preach on the necessity of prayer, of contempt for the things of this earth, on death, judgment, paradise, and hell, on the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. They will fortify the faith of men, so that when the demon arrives, a great number will not be deceived by his trumpery. I will give them as only a mother can, my son Jesus, and they will listen to him alone. They will love him alone. They will faithfully announce him according to the gospel. Through them, my church will be entirely renewed. That message is also taken from the Marian movement of priests. Theotokens are the heirs of the Marian movement of priests. Mary's final message was virtually a call for the Marian movement of priests to hand on the baton to her new order because she concluded with the same exhortation that she had given on the mountain of La Salette. That is, you are the apostles of the last times. Live as faithful disciples of Jesus, in contempt for the world and for yourselves, in poverty, in humility, in silence, in prayer, in mortification, in charity, and in union with God, while you are unknown and despised by the world. Come out from your hiddenness in order to go and shed light upon the earth. Let the faith be the light which enlightens you in these days of darkness, and let zeal alone consume you, zeal for the honor and glory of my Son Jesus. Fight, children of the light. Theotokens will be as Mary present in the world. Theotokens can regard the messages in the Marian movement of priests as a formation guide. 
message number 85. Following now upon my interventions, the time has come when I must make myself present in person and act in the church whose mother I am. I want to act through you, O priests consecrated to my immaculate heart. Message number 108F. I am calling you, my beloved sons, to gather you all into my cohort, of which I myself am the queen and the leader. Message number 527J. My soul is pierced by many souls who are being lost and going each day into hell. Help me to save them. Help me with prayer, with suffering, with your love, with your faithfulness. And message number 124, A, B, and C. I am bringing you with me to Calvary, with me beneath the cross of my son, where I became your mother. Look at my son Jesus, who is dying on the cross for you. And message number 521, F. The Holy Spirit will cause you to understand the times through which you are living. The Holy Spirit will be light upon your way and will make you courageous witnesses of the gospel in the dreadful hour of the great apostasy. The Holy Spirit will bring you to grasp that which I will make manifest to you concerning what is contained in the steel sealed book. From these reflections, it can be inferred that Eve the mother of all the living, was the last to be created, the pinnacle and completion of the universe. So the rule of the mother of God is the last to light the lampstand, the pinnacle of God's charisms. That the mother of God calls everyone to a life of completion, that is, to a life of perfection, including the clergy, the religious and the laity, and each according to their state of life. That a new era is awaiting the earth. Behold, the dwelling of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be with them. And that passage is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verse 3. The mother of God is calling us to the heights of holiness. Search Marian News for more information, website, podcasts, and videos. May Jesus and Mary be loved by all hearts. Motto of the Order of the Mother of God.